Are you the nice guy? The one who bends over backwards for everyone but gets nothing in return? The one who's stuck in the friend zone while the jerks seem to have all the luck? If you're tired of being walked over, used, and taken advantage of, then welcome to the No More Mr. Nice Guy audiobook channel. This is your guide to breaking free from the trap of niceness and reclaiming your life. Dr. Robert Glover's revolutionary book, and no more Mr. Nice Guy, has helped millions of men around the world overcome the nice guy syndrome and finally take control of their relationships, their careers, and their lives. And now, we're bringing the book to life here on YouTube with in-depth analysis, practical tips, and real-life stories to help you ditch the people-pleasing persona and become the authentic, confident man you were always meant to be. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join us on this journey to transformation. Together, we'll say and no more Mr. Nice Guy and start living life on our own terms. 1. World War I, feminism, and public schooling have broken the bond between boys and their fathers. 2. The last generations of boys grew up without a healthy male model and adopted as a result a feminized version of masculinity called the nice guy syndrome. 3. Nice guys force themselves to live according to a set of rules they learned in their childhood as a result of not getting their needs met. 4. The pattern goes like this. I have needs dash, they're not met, probably because I am bad dash. I have to be good to get my needs met. Nice guys believe that they have to be perfect to get their needs met. 5. By trying to appear perfect in the eyes of everyone else, they cut themselves from their core masculinity which prevents them from being happy and fulfilled. 6. They expect other people to fulfill their needs if they behave well and become rageful and frustrated when they don't. 7. To recover, nice guys must understand that they have to put their needs a priority, change the way they think and act, face their fears, and express themselves clearly. What no more Mr. Nice Guy talks about. The nice guy syndrome finds its roots in societal shifts and in the poor education men received. Societal changes enacted after World War II have led to three major disruptions in the lives of young boys. They lost their relationship with their fathers. In the past, boys worked alongside their fathers and cousins in the fields. Today, fathers go to work and boys go to school where they are, likely, educated by women. They were educated by women only. The educational system, widely dominated by women, trained boys to seek the approval of women constantly. The rise of divorces led boys to spend more time with their mothers than with their fathers. The rise of feminism. Feminism was often communicated as an anti-man ideology instead of a pro-woman ideology. Additionally, most nice guys had unmet needs between 0 and 5. This led them to develop the following paradigm they didn't get rid of as they grew. I am not getting my needs met. I am not getting them met because I am bad, invisible, not enough, or I don't matter. I have to be a good boy and respect all the rules to get my needs met. If I become a good boy, others will notice me and fulfill my needs. As a result, nice guys spend their time helping others and fixing all the problems they can find. Constantly seek the approval of others, particularly women. Hide and repress all of their negative sides due to their certainty that they are bad. Doing so, they cut themselves off from their masculinity and identity. Constantly fear being abandoned or scolded and repress their feelings as a result, which prevents them from bonding with other people. This leads these men to experience difficulties. In their relationships, they don't state what they want, get angry when they don't get it, can't set boundaries, and constantly seek to please their partner which annoys the latter due to the pressure and lack of confidence. In their lives, they are constantly unhappy due to their incapacity to state what they want and their passivity because they never go get it due to their low self-esteem and beliefs that they don't deserve it anyway. They don't respect themselves, so no one respects them. At work, they hide all of the mistakes that they made and are afraid to succeed as this would direct too much attention on them and they're afraid to be discovered as a fraud. Nice guys are stubborn. The less their niceness work, the more they do it. They must change the way they think and act and reclaim their masculinity if they hope to have a fulfilling life and relationships at some point. Nice guys stop being nice guys when they prioritize their needs. They become conscious of what they intrinsically want to do and do it. Stop seeking approval from anyone, particularly from women. Understand where their shame and low self-worth come from and release their toxic shame. Face their fears, the fear of rejection, abandonment 
and losing what they have compel nice guys to keep on being nice. Set boundaries. Nice guys never say no because they're scared to be rejected or abandoned as a result. Experience and express their feelings. Nice guys repress their feelings and are highly analytical. Too much. Understand they cannot control everything. Nice guys must find peace in the chaos and constantly changing nature of life by developing the confidence that whatever happens, they will be okay. Five decades of dramatic social change and monumental shifts in the traditional family have created a breed of men who have been conditioned to seek the approval of others. These men are called nice guys. These guys try to do their best to please others, particularly women, and believe that they'll be loved and respected as a result. But they aren't. So they grow frustrated and try to be even nicer, which works even less. This book will teach you to solve your nice guy syndrome and get what you want out of life. Chapter 1. The Nice Guy Syndrome Nice guys believe that if they are a good and do everything right, they will be loved, get their needs met, and have a problem-free life. They desperately want to be liked, so they bend themselves to the will of other people. As a result, no one respects them. They try to eliminate certain things about themselves to become what others want them to be. But it's never enough. Nice guys are 1. Givers They like to help other people and believe generosity is a very important trait. 2. Fixers They will fix any problem anyone will bring them. 3. Approval seekers Everything they do is aimed at finding approval. 4. Conflict avoidance 5. Believe they must hide their flaws or people will abandon them otherwise. 6. Repress their feelings. They tend to think instead of feel. 7. Have father issues and try to be different than them. 8. Struggle to get their needs met primarily. They believe it's bad to put themselves first. What's wrong with this? Nice guy's belief system is inherently wrong. Furthermore, a nice guy isn't a nice guy. He's faking to be nice to get something in return. Nice guys are 1. Dishonest they make themselves according to how they think others want them to be. 2. Secretive. They hide what they're afraid others may find out about them. 3. Compartmentalizing. They change definitions of concepts to hold themselves in high regard. Kissing isn't cheating. 4. Manipulative. Since they're afraid to ask for what they want, they manipulate others into giving it to them. 5. They give to get. When they give something, they always expect something in exchange. 6. Passive-aggressive. 7. Full of rage. Years of unmet needs create boiling rage which they deny because it is often repressed. 8. Addicted. They're so stressed that they easily fall into addictions. 9. They can't set boundaries. They can't say, no. 10. They're often lonely. They desperately want to be loved, but their behavior makes it really hard. 11. Attracted to people and situations that need fixing. 12. Have problems in their intimate relationships. 13. They're bad listeners because they're busy thinking about how they can get the approval of others. 14. Their fear of conflict makes it difficult to sort out issues. 15. Have problems with sex. 16. Fail to live up to their potential. Recovery from the nice guy syndrome isn't about becoming a jerk. It's about integrating all of the aspects of your personality within yourself, or as note, it's about integrating your shadow. An integrated man is able to embrace everything that makes him unique. His power, his assertiveness, his courage, and his passion as well as his imperfections, his mistakes, and his dark side. An integrated male. 1. Likes himself as he is. 2. Takes responsibility for getting his own needs met. 3. Is comfortable with his masculinity and sexuality. 4. He has integrity. He does what is right, not what is expedient. 5. Leads he is willing to provide for and protect those he cares about. 6. He is clear, direct, and expressive of his feelings. 7. He can be nurturing and giving without caretaking or problem-solving. 8. He knows how to set boundaries and is not afraid to work through conflict. An integrated male accepts that he is perfectly imperfect. Breaking free from the nice guy syndrome demands embracing a totally different way of viewing oneself and the world and a complete change in one's personal paradigm. A paradigm is a roadmap we use to orientate ourselves in life. Information that contradicts the paradigm is not a registered. If the paradigm does not suit reality, then we may be led astray. The nice guy's paradigm is, if I can hide my flaws and become what I think others want me to be, then I will be loved.
get my needs met, and have a problem-free life. This paradigm is often developed in childhood. Even when this paradigm doesn't work, nice guys try harder. They find it really hard to try something different instead. Yet, it's not so complicated. 1. Accept yourself how you are. 2. Use mistakes as valuable learning tools. 3. Stop seeking the approval of others. 4. Experience loving and intimate relationships. Make your needs a priority. 5. Find people who can help you make your needs a priority. 6. Give for the sake of giving. 7. Face your fears. Develop integrity and honesty. 8. Set boundaries. 9. Build meaningful relationships with men. 10. Create better relationships with women. 11. Experience and express your feelings. 12. Deal with problems directly. 13. Develop an intimate and satisfying sexual relationship. 14. Find peace with the changing complexities of life. The following breaking free activity will help you get rid of your nice guy syndrome. Breaking free activity 1. Find a therapist, a group therapy, or someone that can help you in your breakup of the nice guy syndrome. Warning. Breaking free from the nice guy syndrome involves a radical change in perspective and behavior. Trying to do it halfway will only result in needless suffering. Second, breaking free from the nice guy syndrome will significantly affect your personal relationships. Breaking free. Activity 2. Why would it seem rational for a person to try to eliminate or hide certain things about himself and try to become something different unless there was a compelling reason for him to do so? Why do people try to change who they really are? Take some time and think about this. Is this your behavior or the behavior of someone you know? Chapter 2. The Making of a Nice Guy So, why would people try to change who they are? Because it does not feel safe or acceptable for a boy or man to be just who he is. All nice guys in their childhood received a message from their families that meant that it wasn't desirable or acceptable to be how they were and that they had to be a good in order to be loved. The nice guy syndrome is usually formed between 0 and 5 years old, years during which the child is highly influenceable. We need to understand two things about children. 1. When they're born, they're helpless. If their parents abandon them, they die. As a result, their greatest fear is abandonment. 2. They are ego-centered. They believe that the world revolves around them and that everything that happens, happens because of them. Dash, when a child experiences being abandoned, he thinks this is his fault. E.g. 1. He is hungry and no one feeds him. 2. He cries and no one holds him. 3. He is lonely and no one pays attention to him. 4. A parent gets angry at him. 5. A parent neglects him. 6. A parent puts unrealistic expectations on him. 7. A parent uses him to gratify his or her own needs. 8. A parent shames him. 9. A parent hits him. 10. A parent doesn't want him. 11. A parent leaves him and doesn't come back in a timely manner. Dash, every child has experienced abandonment. Children believe then that they're abandoned because of who they are, which creates toxic shame, the belief that they are inherently bad or unlovable. So they develop survival mechanisms to help them do three things. 1. Try to cope with the emotional and physical distress of being abandoned. 2. Try to prevent similar events from happening again. 3. Try to hide their internalized toxic shame or perceived badness from themselves and others. These survival mechanisms can be behaving badly to attract attention due to loneliness or behaving uh, in a good way, uh, etc. Whatever type of family they had, all nice guys develop the inherent belief that they're not enough as they are. This led them to find ways to get approval from others. Regardless of whether they were abused, abandoned, neglected, shamed, used, smothered, controlled, or objectified, all nice guys internalized the same belief. It was a bad or dangerous thing for them to be just who they were. The child concluded that there must be something wrong with him because his parents did X, Y, or Z. E.g. When I cry, no one comes. Mom gets that look on her face. Dad left and didn't come back. Mom has to do everything for me. Dad yells at me. I'm not perfect like mom and dad. I can't make mom happy. These led the boy to conclude, I am only good enough when. I'm different from dad. Mom needs me. I don't make any mistakes. I make good grades. I'm happy. I'm not like my brother. I don't cause anyone any problems. I make mom and dad happy. So, 
nice guys develop survival mechanisms to help them do these three things. 1. Try to cope with the pain and terror caused by their abandonment experiences. 2. Try to prevent these abandonment experiences from occurring again. 3. Try to hide their toxic shame from themselves and others. These are transformed into the following paradigm. If I can hide my flaws and become what I think others want me to be, then I will be loved, get my needs met, and have a problem-free life. There are two types of nice guys. 1. I am so bad, nice guy. These nice guys believe they are super bad, and that everyone can see it. 2. I am so good, nice guy. This man handles his toxic shame by repressing his core belief about his worthlessness. He believes he is one of the nicest guys you will ever meet. If he is conscious of any perceived flaws, they are seen as minor and easily correctable. As a child, he was never a moment's problem. As a teen, he did everything right. As an adult, he follows all the rules to a T. This nice guy has tucked his core toxic shame into a handy, airtight compartment deep in his unconscious mind. He masks his toxic shame with the belief that all the good things he does make him a good person. Even though the result is the opposite, the root is the same. All nice guys believe they're not okay as they are. Breaking free. Activity 3. Write on a piece of paper the experiences that made you feel that it wasn't okay to be who you were. Share these experiences with a safe person. As you do, note your feelings. Do you feel sad, angry, lonely, numb? Share this information as well. Name these experiences, don't blame. On the origins of nice guys. While there probably have always been nice guys, the societal shifts of the recent decades have created as many as there have ever been. The 20th century saw the following changes. The transition from an agrarian to an industrial economy. Boys used to work in the fields with their fathers, uncles, and brothers where they had role models of what it was like to be a man. Fathers have almost no contacts anymore. The movement of families from rural areas to urban areas. The absence of fathers from the home. The increase in divorce, single-parent homes, and homes headed by women. An educational system dominated by women. School now acts as basing boys' basic training on how to please women. Women's liberation and feminism. Many women raised their daughters not to need a man, and they raised their sons in a different way than their fathers. Feminism made lots of negative generalizations about men. The Vietnam War. The sexual revolution. These events created three dynamics. One, boys were separated from their fathers and other significant male role models. They became confused and ignorant regarding what it is to be a man. Most nice guys described their fathers in a negative way. Two, boys were left to be raised by women. But women don't know how to raise boys. Boys started to seek the approval of women. 3. Radical feminism implied that men were bad and or unnecessary. Many men thought they had to hide their masculinity to be liked by women. Nice guys were obviously incapable of raising boys, so the nice guy syndrome continues to this day. Nice guys have the particularity to keep on doing what doesn't work. E.g. Seeking the approval of others. Trying to hide their perceived flaws and mistakes. Putting other people's needs and wants before their own sacrificing their personal power and playing the role of a victim, disassociating themselves from other men and their own masculine energy, co-creating relationships that are less than satisfying, creating situations in which they do not have very much good sex, failing to live up to their full potential. The next chapters will deal with curing your nice guy syndrome. Chapter 3. Learn to please yourself. Just about everything a nice guy does is consciously or unconsciously calculated to gain someone's approval or to avoid disapproval. All of them change their personalities around other people to be accepted. Because nice guys don't believe they're lovable as they are, they do something to become lovable and get the approval of everyone, including strangers and people they don't like. This something is called attachments, dressing well, being overly nice, etc. Without them, Nice guys wouldn't consider themselves worthy of love due to their toxic shame. They believe that if anyone really got to know them, they would also think they're bad people. Breaking free. Activity 4. In which ways do you seek approval? Having one's hair just right. Being smart. Having a pleasant, non-threatening voice. Appearing unselfish. Being different from other men. Staying sober. Being in good shape. Being a great dancer. Being a good lover. Never getting angry. Making other people happy. Being a good worker. Having a clean car. 
dressing well, being nice, respecting women, never offending anyone, appearing to be a good, write any other ways that may not be written. Nice guys seek approval in any situation, but they seek it more in their relationship with women because their approval is the ultimate validation of their worth. Approval from women takes the form of sex. When women pay attention to nice guys, they think this is a mark of approval. When she's in a bad mood, nice guys think this is a sign of disapproval. Seeking a woman's approval requires nice guys to constantly monitor the possibility of a woman's availability. Nice guys think a woman needs to be in a good mood prior to having sex, so they won't do anything that will upset them. Many nice guys copy the mood of their partner. If she's happy, they're happy too. This gives women power over nice guys' mood. When women deem nice guys a jerks or bad, the nice guys will believe it. Seeking women's approval constantly creates rage toward women as they eventually fail to give the nice guy everything he requires from her. Breaking free. Activity 5. Consider this. If you did not care what people thought of you, how would you live your life differently? If you were not concerned with getting the approval of women, how would your relationships with the opposite sex be different? Since nice guys do not believe they are okay just as they are, they see any mistake or perceived flaw as proof that they are bad and unlovable. So, nice guys hide their flaws, their mistakes, being late, not understanding, forgetting, feeling depressed, in pain, etc., and their needs such as their sexuality. They are getting older. Breaking free. Activity 6. Write down examples of situations in which you have tried to hide or distract attention from any of these perceived flaws. How effective do you think you are in keeping these things hidden from the people you love? Ways nice guys use to hide their mistake. 1. Lying. Most nice guys think they're nice and honest, but they're all fundamentally dishonest. 2. Drawing on their account. Since nice guys make so much effort to be nice, they think that the good things they do compensate for the bad things they do. 3. Fixing. When mature people make a mistake, they apologize. Nice guys try to fix it at any cost to prevent the other person from getting angry. 4. Dear response. Dear stands for defense, explain, excuse, rationalize. It's a strategy nice guys use to get other people to focus on something else than their mistakes. 5. Shame dumping. When the nice guy is confronted with a mistake he made, he experiences toxic shame and will try to trigger it in the other person too as a defense mechanism. E.g. Blame, bringing up the past, deflection, and pointing out the other person's flaws. 6. Walls. Nice guys build walls to avoid others getting too close to them as they would see a who he really is a. E.g. Addictions, food, work, sex, humor, sarcasm intellectualism, perfectionism, and isolation. While the nice guy desperately wants to be loved, the above behavior achieves the exact opposite. It keeps people at bay so the nice guy doesn't connect with anyone in the end. Hiding one's humanity and trying to project an image of perfection makes a person vague, slippery, lifeless, and uninteresting. Breaking free, activity seven. Do you believe that people can see your human imperfections and still love you? How would you be different if you knew the people who care about you would never leave you or stop loving you, no matter what? To stop being a nice guy, you need to stop seeking the approval of others to seek the approval of yourself. Ironically, when nice guys begin focusing on pleasing themselves, they actually begin to experience the intimacy and connection with others that they have always desperately craved. Let's see how you can start looking for your own approval. Identify approval-seeking behavior. Do you hold the door for people? Do you dress amazingly nice hoping to gather comments? What do you do to gain approval? Start paying attention. Every time you notice, turn your attention inward. What do you want to do? Don't think about what other people want you to do. What do you want to do? Breaking free. Activity 8. Go back to activity 4. Choose one of the ways you try to get external validation and do one of the following. 1. Stop doing it. Tell the people around you what you are doing. If you slip, tell a safe person about it. Use the slip as information about why, in that particular moment, you felt the need to get external approval. 2. Consciously do more of this behavior. This may not make logical sense, but it is a powerful way to explore any dysfunctional behavior. Observe how you feel when you consciously try harder to get external validation. Take care of yourself. If a nice guy believes he isn't worth much, his actions toward himself will reflect this belief. 
Take better care of yourself. Most nice guys can't find one or two things to do for themselves. Here are a few options. Exercise, work out, go for a walk. Eat healthy food. Get enough sleep. Relax, play, goof off. Get a massage. Go out with buddies. Buy a new pair of shoes. Get shoes polished. Get dental work done. Listen to music. As the nice guy does something good for him, he will feel uncomfortable because he is implying that he has value indeed, which contradicts his feelings about himself. With time, one of the two beliefs will win, so keep on taking care of yourself. Breaking free. Activity 9. Begin with the list above and add good things that you can do for yourself. Put the list up where you will see it and choose at least one thing per day and do it for yourself. Positive affirmations. Affirmations alone won't help you, but they will if you use them with the other strategies. Breaking free. Activity 10. Make a list of positive affirmations about yourself. Write them on note cards and place them where you will see them regularly. Change the cards often so they stay fresh. When you read affirmations, close your eyes and fully embrace the meaning of the words. Observe any tendency of your mind to reject the affirmations in favor of old, deeply held beliefs. The following are some possible affirmations. I am lovable just as I am. I am perfectly imperfect. My needs are important. I am a strong and powerful person. I can handle it. People love and accept me just as I am. It is okay to be human and make mistakes. I am the only person I have to please. Spend time alone. When alone, the nice guy will be less likely to caretake, seek approval, sacrifice himself, or try to fix someone's problems. Spend time alone to find out what you really like to do. Spending time alone also teaches you that it's okay to be alone. You won't die from it. Write in a journal too. Breaking free. Activity 11. Plan a weekend trip to the mountains or beach. If possible, plan a vacation or retreat for a week or longer by yourself to a place where no one knows you. Visit a foreign country by yourself if at all possible. Use this time as an opportunity for self-observation and reflection. Keep a journal. Practice good self-care. Spend time doing the breaking free exercises. When you return home, observe how you are different and how long it takes for you to begin returning to familiar patterns. Reveal yourself to others. When nice guys try to hide their humanity from others, they reinforce their core belief that they are bad and unlovable. Changing this core belief requires that they bring their humanity out into the open, release their toxic shame, and receive more accurate messages than the ones internalized in childhood. Do this with people you trust, and that won't hurt you. Get rid of the nice guy. As you release your toxic shame and seek your own approval, you will realize that you are not a bad person. You don't have to do anything to get others' approval. You don't need to hide your flaws. People can love you as you are. Nobody wants to connect with perfect people. As you accept yourself as you are and reveal yourself as such, you will attract many people. Nobody likes a chameleon guy. Chapter 4. Make your needs a priority. Nice guys generally focus their attention on meeting everyone else's needs while trying to be a low-maintenance of kinds of guys themselves. When a child's needs aren't met, the child comes to believe that it's because he doesn't deserve it. Some also believe that others leave them precisely because they have needs. They develop the following coping mechanisms. Appearing needless. For nice guys, trying to become needless and wantless was a primary way of trying to cope with their childhood abandonment experiences. Since it was when they had the most needs that they felt the most abandoned, they believed it was their needs that drove people away. The natural outcome of these was that they learned to expect not having their needs met on one hand and suppressing them completely on the other. But you can't live without tending to your needs. So they figured out a way to have them met in covert ways, manipulating, lying, cheating, etc. Not receiving anything people want to give them. Nice guys can't receive or get their needs met because this contradicts what they learned in childhood. Nice guys are extremely uncomfortable when they actually do get what they want. They maintain these principles by having relationships with needy and unavailable people. This shows in the ways nice guys get their sexual needs met. They choose partners that struggle to be sexual, ensure to meet their partner's needs before having them met, make passive-aggressive comments, etc. Breaking free. Activity 12. Ask yourself if you believe it is okay to have needs. Do you believe people want to help you meet your needs? Do you believe this world is a place of abundance? Using covert contracts. 
Nice guys use covert contracts to have their needs met without anyone's notice. They help. That's how the contract is written. I will do this. I'll fill in the blank for you so that you will do this. I'll fill in the blank for me. We will both act as if we have no awareness of this contract. E.g. Saying I love you to get an I love you back. The primary paradigm of the nice guy syndrome is nothing more than a big covert contract with life. Breaking free. Activity 13. Identify at least one covert contract between you and a significant other. What do you give? What do you expect in return? Share this information with the other person. Ask the person how it feels to respond to an unclear agenda. They caretake others to get their needs met. Nice guys caretake or others to feel valued, then hope others will spontaneously take care of them, or hope doing so means they won't have to deal with their own problems. Taking care is not equal to caretaking. Taking care gives others what they need. Doesn't expect anything in return. Come from abundance. Caretaking gives others what he needs to give. Comes from a place of scarcity. Always expect, at least unconsciously, something in return. Nice guys give in the way they like others to give them. Breaking free. Activity 14. Identify two or three examples of your caretaking behavior. In order to stimulate awareness of your caretaking, do one of the following for a period of one week. 1. Go on a caretaking moratorium. Because nice guys have a difficult time differentiating between caring and caretaking, stop giving completely, except to young, dependent children. Tell people what you are doing so they won't be confused. Observe your feelings and other people's reactions. 2. Consciously try to caretake more than you already do. As odd as this assignment may sound, it is a very effective way to create awareness of your caretaking behavior. Pay attention to how you feel and how other people react to you. Covert contracts only lead to frustration because the nice guy, despite his best efforts, never gets his needs met. This cycle creates the victim triangle. Breaking free. Activity 15. Observe the ways you hurt the people you love. Do you make cutting remarks or hurtful at jokes? Do you embarrass them in public? Are you frequently late? Do you forget the things they've asked you to do? Do you criticize them? Do you withdraw from them or threaten to leave? Do you let frustration build until you blow up at them? Ask the significant others in your life to give you feedback about your caretaking. This information may be hard to hear and may trigger a shame attack, but it is important information for breaking out of the victim triangle. Since nice guys learn to sacrifice themselves in order to survive, recovery must center on learning to put themselves first and making their needs a priority. In other words, you need to learn to become selfish. Mature people make their needs a priority. You should too. It's not other people's job to take care of your needs, and it's not your job to take care of others' needs. Yet it feels to nice guys like the quickest route to being disliked. They think people will get angry at them and think that they're selfish. But it's actually the only route to be liked. Consider that when you take care of your own needs, you. They increase the likelihood of getting what they need and want. They can give judiciously, giving what people really need. They can give without resentment and expectation. They become less needy. They become more attractive. Most folks are attracted to men who have a sense of self. Putting the self first doesn't drive people away, it attracts them. You need to take responsibility for your own needs. You need to shift your mindset. Tattoo the following principles in your brain. Having needs is part of being human. Mature people make meeting their own needs a priority. They can ask for help in meeting their needs in clear and direct ways. Other people really do want to help them meet their needs. This world is a place of abundance. Nice guys must put their needs first not only to have them met, but to reclaim their power. When they do so, everyone around them benefits because everything becomes clearer. No more covert contracts or manipulation. Try it. Put yourself first for at least a week and see what happens. Making the decision is the hardest part. Doing it is quite easy. Breaking free. Activity 16. Make a decision to put yourself first for a weekend or even a whole week. Tell the people around you what you are doing. Ask a friend to support you and encourage you in this process. Pay attention to your initial anxiety. Pay attention to your tendency to revert to old patterns. At the end of the time period, ask the people around you what it was like for them when you put yourself first. Remember, you don't have to do it perfectly. Just do it. Chapter 5. Reclaim Your Personal Power 
nice guys tend to be wimpy victims because their life paradigm and childhood survival mechanisms require them to sacrifice their personal power. Feeling like a victim is common. They often consider that their problems are caused by other people. So they feel frustrated, vengeful, and rageful. Nice guys often try to create friction-free lives. But they always fail for two reasons. One, there is no such thing as a friction-free life, even though they believe it should be. Since they didn't get their needs met as kids, they overcompensate in their adult life by suppressing randomness and uncertainty as much as possible. Two, they do the exact opposite of what they should do because they still rely on the beliefs and mechanisms they developed as kids. The dependence on these ineffective survival mechanisms keeps nice guys trapped in the memory of their fearful childhood experiences and perpetuates a vicious cycle. The more scared they are, the more they use them, the less successful they are, the more scared they are, etc. Breaking Free Activity 17 Look over the following list of ways nice guys try to create a smooth, problem-free life. Doing it right. Playing it safe. Anticipating and fixing. Trying not to rock the boat. Being charming and helpful. Never being a moment's problem. Using covert contracts. Controlling and manipulating. Caretaking and pleasing. Withholding information. Repressing feelings. Making sure other people don't have feelings. Avoiding problems and difficult situations. Write down an example of how you used each coping mechanism in childhood and in adulthood. Note how each of these behaviors keeps you feeling like a powerless victim. Share this information with a safe person. Reclaim your personal power. Personal power is a state of mind in which a person is confident he can handle whatever may come. This is the best type of power there is. It doesn't suppress fear. It helps act in spite of it. The following strategies will help you reclaim your personal power. Surrendering. Dwelling in reality. Expressing feelings. Facing fears. Developing integrity. Setting boundaries. Surrendering. Surrendering means letting go of all of the things that cannot be changed or controlled. It means letting them be as they are. Instead of asking, oh, why is this happening to me? And the recovering nice guy can respond to life's challenges by pondering, oh, what do I need to learn from this situation? Breaking free. Activity 18. Think about one a gift from the universe that you initially resisted, but can now see as a positive stimulus for growth or discovery. Are there any similar gifts in your life right now to which you need to surrender? Share this information with a safe person. Observe reality as it is, not as you wish it to be. Nice guys make up belief systems about the world and people to attempt to control them. But since these systems aren't true, they always fail in their endeavors. E.g., if your wife has become fat, depressed, and no longer wants to have sex with you, you can't maintain she is the love of your life. Breaking Free Activity 19 Pick one area in your life in which you routinely feel frustrated or out of control. Step back from the situation. Is the difficulty you are having with the situation the result of your trying to project the reality you want to believe onto it? If you had to accept the reality of this situation, how might you change your response to it? Express your feelings. Nice guys fear everyone's feelings, including their own. This is because they make them feel out of control on the one hand, and feelings have a mostly negative connotation due to their childhood on the other. So they often repress them. Then they will convince themselves that the reason why they do so is that they don't want to hurt anyone. The truth, though, is that they don't want to get hurt themselves. They don't want to recreate their childhood experiences. Nice guys need to understand that their feelings won't kill them then they need to get in touch with them by really going deep and wondering, how do I feel about this? Breaking Free, Activity 20 Some guidelines about expressing feelings. Don't focus on the other person. You are making me mad. Instead, take responsibility for what you are feeling. Oh, I am feeling angry. Don't use feeling words to describe what you are thinking as in, oh, I feel like Joe was trying to take advantage of me. Instead, Pay attention to what you are experiencing in your body. Well, I'm feeling helpless and frightened. In general, try to begin feeling statements with I or rather than a you. Try to avoid the crutch of saying oh, I feel like. As in, oh, I feel like you are being mean to me. Face your fears. For nice guys, fear is recorded at the cellular level. It is a memory of every seemingly life-threatening experience they ever had. Because of this, nice guys look at the world as a highly dangerous place. So, they play it safe, which creates suffering. 
Suffering because they avoid new situations. Suffering because they stay with the familiar. Suffering because they procrastinate, avoid, and fail to finish what they start. Suffering because they make a bad situation worse by doing more of what has never worked in the past. Suffering because they expend so much energy trying to control the uncontrollable. The only way to overcome your fear is to face it. Every time you do so, you create the subconscious confidence that you can face it, which gives you a head start for your next fear. Breaking Free Activity 21 List one fear that has been controlling your life. Once you decide to confront the fear, begin repeating to yourself, I can handle it. No matter what happens, I will handle it. Keep repeating this mantra until you take action and stop feeling fear. Have some integrity. Most nice guys pride themselves on being honest and trustworthy. In reality, nice guys are fundamentally dishonest. They tell lies and withhold truths about themselves because they're afraid that they wouldn't be loved if other people knew. E.g., the husband lying to his wife about seeing a movie. Many nice guys don't want to tell the truth because someone got angry when they did. But that's the reality of life. It's actually easier to live in the truth than in the lie. Ask yourself what you think is right. And do it. Breaking free. Activity 22. Choose one area in which you have been out of integrity. Identify the fear that keeps you from telling the truth or doing the right thing. Reveal this situation to a safe person. Then go and tell the truth or do what you have to do to make the situation right. Tell yourself you can handle it. Since telling the truth may create a crisis for you or others, have faith that everyone involved will survive this crisis. Set boundaries. Learning to set boundaries allows nice guys to stop feeling like helpless victims and reclaim their personal power. This is one of the most fundamental skills to learn. Most nice guys believe that a meek response will stop the person from invading their boundaries, which is rarely the case. They're afraid that if they get clear on their boundaries, they'll be abandoned. Once they learn how to set boundaries, they get addicted and get to the other extreme of boundary setting. Boundary setting prevents other people from doing things nice guys dislike, which means their relationship improves over time. Breaking free. Activity 23. Before you can start setting boundaries, you have to become aware of how much you back up from your line to avoid conflict or to keep the peace. For the next week, observe yourself. Do you say, yes you when you would rather say a no? Do you agree to do something to avoid conflict? Do you avoid doing something because someone might get upset with you? Do you tolerate an intolerable situation, hoping that it will just go away? Write these observations down and share them with a safe person. Take a walk on the wild side. There is no IKEA to a smooth life. Being it good or doing it right doesn't insulate nice guys from the chaotic, ever-changing realities of life. Life isn't meant to be peaceful or boring. It's meant to be crazy. As you embrace it, you will begin to enjoy it more. Chapter 6. Reclaim Your Masculinity It's okay to be a guy. The social changes we have talked about compel men to be more and more passive. Let's see how. Disconnection from men. Many nice guys don't have any male friends because they don't know how to do it. Uh, their lack of relationship with their fathers means they experience some difficulty bonding with other men. Some think they're different from other men because they don't get angry, controlling, or violent. When nice guys are disconnected from men, they're disconnected from their masculinity. Breaking free. Activity 24. Note the ways you have consciously or unconsciously tried to be different from your father and or other men. How does the belief that you are different keep you disconnected from other men? Disconnection from masculinity. Masculinity is that part of a man that equips him to survive as an individual, clan, and species. Masculinity empowers men to create, produce, provide, and protect. Masculinity implies strength, discipline, courage, passion, persistence, and integrity, and assumes the potential for aggressiveness, destructiveness, and brutality. The latter three scare nice guys because it usually scares women, so they repress this side of themselves hoping they'll get women's approval in return. Meanwhile, they complain women seem to be attracted to a jerk, so. The problem is that when nice guys repress their dark side, their shadow, they also repress other good things inherent to masculinity. As a result, they lose sexual assertiveness, competitiveness, creativity, ego, thirst for experience, boisterousness, exhibitionism, and power. Nice guys are monogamous to their mothers. Most boys fall in love with their mothers and want them all for themselves. 
Parents must help the boy to go over this desire, bond with other boys and men, then grow up to become a healthy male that can then have a relationship with a woman. The lack of fathers in the home and the need to take care of their mothers a led nice guys to develop an unhealthy relationship with their mothers. In adulthood, women who try to date nice guys notice that they're simply not available for them. Nice guys seek women's approval. Nice guys are desperate for women's approval. They do everything to please them and always fail because women don't like men doing everything for them. They see them as weak. Getting your masculinity back. To get your masculinity back, you'll have to connect with other men, get strong, find healthy male models, and re-examine your relationship with your father. Connecting with men. Connecting with men means doing guy things with guys. To do so, you will have to make time, take risks, and be vulnerable, opening yourself up. You can connect with men by joining groups that do traditionally male activities, like fighting, fishing, sports, etc. That means nice guys will have to take time off from their girlfriends and families. Developing male friendships makes nice guys less likely to be resentful toward women. Friendship with men is much deeper for men because there's no sexual agenda. When a nice guy connects with men in a way he never could connect with his father, he breaks the bond with his mother. Breaking free. Activity 25. List three men whom you would like to get to know better. Next to each man's name, list a possible activity you could do together. Next to this, write down a date and make a commitment to contact him by this day. Get strong. Strength and power are masculine attributes that you need to develop. To do so, stop eating junk food, eat healthy food, get off drugs and alcohol, go to the gym, learn how to fight, relax, and take some rest. Breaking free. Activity 26. Identify three ways in which you neglect your body. Write down three ways in which you can start taking better care of yourself. Seek out healthy role models. Befriend guys with a strong masculine essence and hang out with them. You will become more like them as time passes. Breaking free. Activity 27. Visualize what you think a healthy male would look like. What personality traits would he possess? Write these down. Do you know anyone who has a number of these traits? How could you use this person as a healthy role model? Reassess your relationship with your father. None of the nice guys had a good relationship with their fathers. They were absent, not available emotionally, or weak, nice guys themselves. Often, nice guys perceive their fathers through the eyes of their mothers. They must stop doing so and begin to perceive their fathers more objectively. This may mean that nice guys should express their rage at their fathers for failing to do their job, even if the father's dead. Breaking free, activity 28. Embracing masculinity involves coming to see dad more accurately. To facilitate this process, create a list. On the left side, list a number of your father's characteristics. Write the opposite characteristic on the right side. Indicate where, on the spectrum between the two, do you see yourself? When recovering nice guys do this exercise, they are often surprised at what they discover about their fathers and themselves. They often see how they have made their fathers into a caricature, a distortion of who they really are. They may realize that if the man they have become is based on a reaction to how they saw their fathers, they too have become caricatures. Remember, the opposite of crazy is still crazy. They realize that if their lives are a reaction to dad, then dad is still in control. They discover that they can be different from dad without being the opposite. They often come to realize that they have more traits in common with their fathers than they had previously realized or wanted to accept. While women know when they become women, there isn't the same thing for men. So many tribes came up with rituals of initiation that would take the boy from boyhood to adulthood. Today, these rites no longer exist. So if you are an adult, make sure you can be a positive influence on young boys. Breaking free, activity 29. How can you provide a healthy male support system for the boys and young men you know? List three boys along with an activity you can participate in with them. Likewise, girls benefit from seeing what a real man looks like, how he sets boundaries, how he takes responsibility, etc. Chapter 7. Get the Love You Want. Success Strategies for Intimate Relationships. Intimate relationships are often an area of great frustration and bewilderment for nice guys. Most nice guys profess a great desire for intimacy and happiness with their significant other. Nevertheless, intimacy represents an enigmatic riddle for the majority of these men. 
Nice guys fail to experience intimacy due to their toxic shame and childhood survival mechanisms. There are six reasons why nice guys struggle to get the love they want. Let's go through each of them. Toxic shame. Intimacy implies vulnerability. It requires two people who are willing to courageously look inward and make themselves totally visible to one another. Since nice guys believe they are inherently bad and must hide themselves to be loved, looking inward, or letting someone else do so, is terrifying. Dysfunctional relationships. The moment he enters a relationship, the nice guy begins to struggle to balance the fear of vulnerability, getting too close, on one hand, and the fear of isolation on the other. In order to do so well, the nice guy chooses a partner that has as much difficulty being intimate. They create a relationship together that frustrates everyone. Patterns of enmeshment and avoidance. Intimacy is usually played out in two different scenarios depending on the nice guy. The enmesher. Nice guys become way too involved in the relationship at the expense of their lives. His world revolves around her and he will do anything for her. The avoider. Nice guys become emotionally unavailable for their partners while playing the nice guys outside of the relationship. He focuses on everyone but his partner. Breaking free. Activity 30. Ask yourself. Are you an enmesher or an avoider in your present relationship? How would your partner see you? Does the pattern ever change? What roles have you played in past relationships? Childhood patterns. If the nice guy listened to his mother's complaints as a kid to get attention, he may choose a partner that will want to complain all the time so he has someone to listen to, to get attention. If the boy's parent would often come home angry, he will expect his partner to do the same. These projections permutate the dysfunctional relationship and prevent nice guys from getting the intimacy they desire. Breaking free. Activity 31. We tend to be attracted to people who have some of the worst traits of both of our parents. Instead of blaming your partner for your unconscious choice, identify the ways in which she helps you recreate familiar relationship patterns from your childhood. Share this with your partner. Remaining monogamous to mom. This prevents nice guys from bonding with their partners. Breaking free. Activity 32. The following are a few of the ways nice guys unconsciously maintain a monogamous bond to their mothers. Look over the list. Note any of the behavior patterns that may serve to keep you monogamous to your mother. Share this information with a safe person. Over-involvement with work or hobbies. Creating relationships with people who need fixing. Addictions to drugs or alcohol. Sexual addictions to pornography, masturbation, fantasy chat lines, or hookers. Affairs. Sexual dysfunction. Lack of desire. Inability to get or maintain an erection. Or premature ejaculation. Forming relationships with women who are angry, sick, depressive, compulsive, addicted, unfaithful, or otherwise unavailable. Avoiding intercourse or taking vows of celibacy. Nice guys are bad enders. They spend too long trying to make dysfunctional relationships work. Even if they do try to end the relationship, they're really bad at doing it. Too late. They do it in an indirect way, etc. Building successful relationships. Nice guys must. Approve of themselves. Put themselves first. Reveal themselves to safe people. Eliminate covert contracts. Take responsibility for their own needs. Surrender. Dwell in reality. Express their feelings. Develop integrity. Set boundaries. Embrace their masculinity. Approve of themselves. The essence of recovery from the nice guy syndrome is the conscious decision to live one's life just as one desires. A nice guy must start to please himself and do what he wants to stop being a nice guy. This is the only way to have a healthy relationship. Breaking free. Activity 33. List some of the ways you try to please your partner. What changes would you make if you did not have to worry about making her happy? Setting boundaries. Women will push their boyfriends in order to test how strong they are. If they manage to push them around, they won't feel safe with them, hence the importance of setting boundaries and standing by them. Ironically, resisting your girlfriend's demands will make her happier than accepting them, or as note, women's demands that they hope won't be fulfilled are called SH asterisk tests. How to know what to set boundaries for? Use the second date rule. If she had done slash said this on a second date, would you have tolerated it? How to know how to deal with her bad behavior? Apply the healthy male rule. How would a healthy male react? Breaking free. Activity 34. 
Are there any areas in your personal relationships in which you avoid setting appropriate boundaries? Do you tolerate intolerable behavior? Avoid dealing with a situation because it might cause conflict. Not ask for what you want. Sacrifice yourself to keep the peace. If you applied the second date rule or the healthy male rule to these situations, how might you change your behavior? Focus on the relationship, not on the partner. Healthy people aren't attracted to unhealthy people. When one of the partners in the relationship is screwed, the other also is. When they focus on the relationship, nice guys can understand why they have the relationship that they do and how it connects to their childhood. Breaking free. Activity 35. The next time you find yourself feeling frustrated, resentful, or rageful at your partner, ask yourself these questions. Why have I invited this person into my life? What do I need to learn from this situation? How would my view of this situation change if I saw it as a gift? Don't reinforce undesirable behavior. If the nice guy reinforces his partner's undesirable behaviors, she will keep behaving in undesirable ways. When their partner is angry, nice guys jump in to try to fix them, which makes them even angrier. Bad behavior should not be condoned but punished. Every time a nice guy responds to a bad behavior, he reinforces it in his partner. Do something different. Get into a relationship with a healthy agenda instead of a dysfunctional one. Don't go looking for someone who needs fixing. Chapter 8. Get the Sex You Want. Success Strategies for Satisfying Sex. For nice guys, sex is where all of their abandonment experiences, toxic shame, and dysfunctional survival mechanisms are focused and magnified. Take everything that nice guys do. Their shame. Their sacrifice of self. Their approval seeking. They're doing the opposite of what works. Their indirectness. Their caretaking. Their covert contracts. Their controlling behavior. Their fear. Their dishonesty. Their difficulty receiving. Their dysfunctional relationships. Their loss of masculine energy. And now you have an idea of how they do sex. All nice guys have problems with sex as none of them get enough of it. Also, they settle for bad sex, have sexual dysfunction, can't maintain erection, come too fast, are sexually repressed, are addicted to it, excessive masturbation, porn, etc. The reason why nice guys struggle with sex is due to their shame and fear of being sexual. It's the hardest thing to understand for nice guys. If you looked into a nice guy's mind to search for information about sex, you would find memories of childhood experiences that made him feel like he was bad. The pain of not getting his needs met in a timely, healthy manner. The effects of growing up with sexually wounded parents. The sexual distortions and illusions of a really screwed up society. The absence of accurate sexual information when it was needed. The sexual guilt and shame associated with centuries of religious influence. The effects of covert sexual bonds created by his mother. The trauma of sexual violations. The memories of early sexual experiences wrapped in secrecy. The distorted and unrealistic images of bodies and sex and pornography. The shame of hidden, compulsive behaviors. The memories of previous sexual failures or rejections. Nice guys find 1001 ways to distract themselves from their own dysfunctional relationship with sex by avoiding sexual situations and sexual opportunities, trying to be a good lover, hiding compulsive sexual behaviors, repressing their life energy, settling for bad sex. Let's have a look at each of them. Avoiding sex. Lots of nice guys believe women don't want sex, so they engage in sexual activities, like kissing, without engaging in sex. And when they do have sex, nice guys don't penetrate their partner for a long time. Trying to be a good lover. Nice guys want to be good lovers to feel valued and get women's approval, so they mainly focus on pleasing their partner and forget about themselves. This strategy can also allow them to set themselves apart from other men or to distract themselves from their shame. Obviously, this is a disaster and creates a recipe for bad, boring sex. Hiding compulsive behaviors. Nice guys believe that sex takes away loneliness, cures boredom, alleviates feelings of worthlessness, smooths over conflict, creates feelings of being loved, relieves stress, and generally solves all personal problems. They have always used sex as a distraction from the loneliness they feel. But since they think sex is bad, they leave it out of sight and repress their sexual desires. The nicer the nice guy, the more distorted his sexual secrets. 
The more dependent on approval he is, the deeper he will hide his sexual needs, repressing their life energy. When they become teenagers, boys must learn how to attract girls' attention to have sex with them. A few find it easily and quickly, but the majority has no clue. Many decide to be nice in the hopes that it would work and then carry this strategy into adulthood. The problem is that trying to be nice robs a man of his life energy. The more they try to be nice, the less attracted women are. Settling for bad sex. Nice guys indirectly signal they want sex and become frustrated when they don't get it. They're never clear about what they want and are never free to do what they want because they are afraid of losing their wife's approval. In order to make sure they get it, they focus 100% on their girlfriends. This creates bad sex which creates resentment. Getting good sex. Let's now have a look at how to get good sex with the following strategies. Coming out of the closet. Taking matters into their own hands. Saying no to bad sex. Following the example of the bull moose. Coming out of the closet. Internalized shame and fear are the greatest barriers to a satisfying sex life. As long as you don't get rid of them, you can read all of the pickup books that you want, you won't succeed. You need to bring out your shame and fear out of the closet to look at it and subsequently release it. This is mandatory. To release sexual shame and fear, the recovering nice guy must expose every aspect of his sexual self to safe, supportive people. Breaking free, pop quiz. Most nice guys initially deny having any shame and fear about sex. Take the following quiz to see if you are in denial about your own sexual shame and fear. 1. Think back to your first sexual experience. Was it A. A joyous experience that you could share with family and friends? B. Hidden, rushed, guilt-ridden? Or in a less-than-ideal situation? C. Painful, abusive, or frightening? 2. When it comes to masturbation. A. Do you and your partner talk openly and comfortably about the subject? B. Would there be a crisis if your partner have caught you doing it? C. Do you do it compulsively or in secret? 3. When it comes to your sexual experiences, thoughts, or impulses. A. You are comfortable revealing everything about yourself to your partner. B. You have secrets that you have never shared with anyone. C. Some aspect of your sexuality has caused a crisis in an intimate relationship. D. At some time in your life you have tried to eliminate or limit some problematic sexual behavior. If you answered anything but A on any of the questions, you have sexual shame and fear. Read on. Breaking free. Activity 37. Find a safe place to talk about the following issues. Your sexual history. Discuss your earliest sexual memory. Your childhood experiences. Any sexual violation and trauma. Any sexual issues in your family. Your first sexual experience. Your adult sexual history. Ways in which you have acted out sexually. Discuss any way you may have acted out through affairs, prostitution, peep shows, 900 numbers, use of pornography, exhibitionism, fetishes, etc. Your dark side. Discuss those things that even you have a hard time looking at in yourself, fantasies, rage, offending behavior. Take matters into your own hands. No one was put into this world to meet your needs but you. All macro behavior patterns are the results of millions of micro behavior patterns. If you want to change the macro behavior, change the micro ones. Going out to find more women is useless. Before you can have a fulfilling sex life with other people, you should have a fulfilling sex life with yourself. How? Practice healthy masturbation. Get comfortable with giving pleasure to yourself without the use of pornography or fantasies. Healthy masturbation is a process of letting sexual energy unfold. It is about learning to pay attention to what feels good. Most of all, it is about accepting sole responsibility for one's sexual pleasure and expression. Healthy masturbation helps remove the shame and fear of being sexual. Puts the nice guy in charge of his own sexual needs. Removes dependency on unavailable partners or pornography. Helps the nice guy learn to please the person that matters most, himself. Gives the nice guy permission to have as much good sex as he wants. Puts the nice guy in charge of his own pleasure. Your girl will feel pressure if you try to make her come every time. She'll be happy if you also do things for yourself when you are having sex with her. Breaking free. Activity 38. Set aside time to practice healthy masturbation. Choose a comfortable place where you will be undisturbed. Practice by looking at yourself and touching yourself without using pornography or fantasy. 
Pay attention to how it feels to experience your sexuality without any goals or agendas, such as having an orgasm. Also observe any tendency to distract yourself from what you are experiencing, going into fantasy, becoming goal-oriented, having distracting thoughts, loss of physical sensation. Just observe these experiences and use them as information about your shame and fear. Say no to bad sex. When it comes to sex, nice guys are consummate bottom feeders. They settle for scraps and come back begging for more. This is why they are addicted to pornography and other sex services. The only way to get good sex is to take responsibility for it. Good sex consists of two people taking full responsibility for meeting their own needs. It has no goal. It is free of agendas and expectations. Rather than being a performance, it is an unfolding of sexual energy. It is about two people revealing themselves in the most intimate and vulnerable of ways. Good sex occurs when two people focus on their own pleasure, passion, and arousal, and stay connected to those same things in their partner. All of these dynamics allow good sex to unfold in unpredictable, spontaneous, and memorable ways. Once you decide you won't settle for anything less than good sex, you will. Let go of the concept of being a great lover. Practice being clear and direct. Choose available partners. Not settle for scraps. Decide that bad sex is not better than no sex. Breaking free. Activity 39. Consider going on a sexual moratorium. Consciously refrain from sex for a predetermined period of time. No matter what your sexual situation is, it can be a powerful learning experience. Most guys initially resist the idea, but once they make the decision to do it, they find it to be a very positive experience. A sexual moratorium can have many benefits. Helps break dysfunction cycles. Eliminates pursuing and distancing. Releases resentment. Allows the nice guy to see that he can live without sex. Helps the nice guy realize that no one else but him holds the key to his sexual experience. Helps the nice guy see how he settles for bad sex. Eliminates fear that the nice guy's partner can withhold sex or approval. Helps the nice guy pay attention to the meaning of sexual impulses. Whenever the nice guy feels the impulse to be sexual, he can automatically ask himself, Oh, why am I feeling sexual? Helps break addictive patterns by eliminating compulsive masturbation, pornography, and other addictive behaviors. Helps the nice guy begin to address feelings he has been avoiding with sex. Before beginning a sexual moratorium, discuss it with your partner. It helps to set a specific time. I suggest three to six months. Decide on the parameters of the moratorium. Once you have begun, pay attention to slips and sabotaging behaviors from both you and your partner. Remember, it is a learning experience. You don't have to do it perfectly. The bull moose. Bull mooses are just themselves. Fierce, strong, competitive, and sexually proud. So girls get turned on naturally. As nice guys become more comfortable being themselves, they become more self-confident, which in turn makes them more attractive. Often, a nice guy's partner gets more turned on as the nice guys selfishly put themselves first. What makes sex exciting is what precisely makes sex terrifying. As recovering nice guys release their sexual shame and fear, take responsibility for their own pleasure, refuse to settle for bad sex, and practice being just who they are, they put themselves in the position to embrace this cosmic force, sex, without fear or reservation. Chapter 9. Get the life you want. Discover your passion and purpose in life, work, and career. If there were no limits to your life, where would you live? What would you do? What work would you do? You need to ask yourself two questions. One, are you creating the life you want? Two, why not? All nice guys are moderately successful by objective standards, but clearly not enough by their own standards. There are a few reasons why nice guys aren't building the life they want. Fear. Trying to do it right. Trying to do everything themselves. Self-sabotage. A distorted self-image. Deprivation thinking. Staying stuck in familiar but dysfunctional systems. Fear. Pretty much everything nice guys do or don't do is governed by fear. Nice guys are scared to ask for a raise. Go back to school to learn some important skills. Quit a job they hate. Start their own business. Live where they really want to. They're afraid of making mistakes or losing it all, so they remain stuck where they are. But above all, nice guys are afraid to succeed because they're afraid that People will think they're a fraud. They won't be able to live up to the expectations. 
They'll be criticized. They won't be able to handle their role. They will lose control. They'll mess the whole thing up, trying to do everything right. Change is the only constant in life. To change, you need to let go of what you cannot control. Nice guys are obsessed with control because they want to keep their lives smooth. So they do everything right. This is a problem as it leads to no creativity or productivity. Perfectionism. Remaining stuck in mediocrity. Preventing risk-taking. Making nice guys rigid, cautious, and fearful. This leads to making nice guys bored and unhappy with their lives. Trying to do everything themselves. Nice guys are terrible receivers because they weren't adequately given as kids. As a result, they also can't ask for help and try to make everything together. Because they do everything themselves, they never really master one skill. Fear of success. Because nice guys are afraid to succeed, they self-sabotage by wasting time, making excuses, not finishing projects, caretaking other people, having too many projects going on at once, getting caught up in chaotic relationships, procrastinating, not setting boundaries. Nice guys appear competent, but they're not because being really good attracts too much attention and problems. So nice guys avoid being too successful. Distorted self-image. Nice guys believe that since their needs weren't important enough to be taken care of as a child, it means they are themselves not important. That's the basis of their toxic shame. At their core, all nice guys believe they are not important or good enough. If the nice guy was also required to tend to the emotional or physical needs of an irresponsible adult and failed to do so, he also developed a feeling of inadequacy. So they compensate by trying to do everything right so no one ever finds out how inadequate they are. The feeling of inadequacy prevents them from improving. Deprivation thinking. Since their needs weren't met as children, nice guys grew up in a world of scarcity. This makes nice guys manipulative and controlling. They believe that it will be the only way that their needs will be met. They also think small. They settle for mediocrity and think that they deserve it. Dysfunctional but familiar systems. Two patterns prevent nice guys from getting what they want. The first is that they tend to recreate familiar yet dissatisfying relationships. Second, nice guys rarely experience the kind of relationships they want because they are bad enders. They keep doing more of the same, hoping things will change, but they never do. It's the same thing for their jobs. They see themselves as hopeless victims hence act as such. Realizing your passion and potential. Follow the following strategies. Face your fears. There is no secret. If there is something you are super afraid of doing, all you can do is actually do that thing. 1. Decide you have to stop being a victim. 2. Set boundaries. 3. The boundaries will help you feel respected. You will start believing in yourself. 4. You will start to be more honest too. 5. Accept that you don't need 99% of the things you think you need to survive. Breaking free. Activity 40. Name a tangible fear from your life. Write down how you will confront that specific issue. Then, take a small step toward facing that fear. Ask someone to encourage and support you. Don't try to do it alone. Remember, no matter what happens, you will handle it. E.g., ask for a raise or promotion. Quit an unsatisfying job. Start your own business. Go back to school. Confront a conflict situation. Promote an idea or something you have created. Pursue a lifelong goal. Spend more time with a hobby or interest. Chart your own path. Most folks, nice guys included, do not consciously take responsibility for creating the kind of life they want. Most nice guys struggle with the idea of responsibility because they are so used to being passive. When they're asked to visualize the life that they want, they often can't do it. The only way to fight this back is to make a conscious decision. A conscious decision to face fears. A conscious decision to not settle for mediocrity. A conscious decision to make my own rules. You need to understand that if others can do it, so can you. Breaking free. Activity 41. What do you really want in life? What prevents you from making it happen? Write down three things you want to make happen in your life. Then write a personal affirmation that will take you where you want to go and post it on a sheet of paper where you can see it. Share your dreams and your affirmation with a safe person. Don't try to do it right. Permit yourself to fail. This will decrease the pressure a lot and will help you succeed. Breaking free. Activity 42. 
How does your perfectionism or need to do it right get in the way of realizing your passion and potential? Pick one thing that you have always wanted to do. Write a book, turn your hobby into a business, move, go back to school, fully embrace a talent. Now, ask yourself the question. If you knew ahead of time that this endeavor would be a success, would you hesitate to do it? Would this knowledge set you free from the belief that you have to do it perfectly? Would this knowledge motivate you to get started or complete what you have already begun? What risks would you be willing to take if you knew ahead of time that there was no way for you to fail? What are you waiting for? Let go of the need to do it perfectly and just do it. Learn to ask for help. You don't have to do everything yourself. In fact, you can't. Learn to ask for help. It will be extremely unsettling at the beginning, but you will need it. And people often love to help anyway. Breaking free. Activity 43. Do you believe your needs are important? Do you believe other people want to help you meet your needs? On a sheet of paper, make a list of helpers you have in your life right now. These can be friends and family members. They can be professionals, such as doctors, lawyers, therapists, and CPAs. After making the list, answer the following questions. What kind of helpers do you still need? How can you use these helpers more effectively? How do you prevent these people from helping you? Start looking for opportunities to ask these people for help. Build networks. Before asking for help, repeat the affirmation. This person wants to help me get my needs met. Identify your self-sabotage behavior. Nice guys sabotage themselves in countless ways. They waste time. They procrastinate. They start things but don't finish. They spend too much time fixing other people's problems. They distract themselves with trivial pursuits. They create chaos. They make excuses. In most situations, nice guys aren't victims to others. They victimize themselves. If you truly want to get what you want to get, you need to consciously make the decision to stop sabotaging yourself. It is a crucial step, and you can't recover from your nice guy syndrome without doing so. Breaking free. Activity 44. Identify how you sabotage yourself. Once you have identified your patterns, determine what you have to do differently to get what you really want. Review each item below and identify specific behaviors that will help you stop sabotaging yourself and achieve your goals. Focus. Do it now. Accept a good enough or rather than perfect. Finish what you start. Don't start new projects until the old ones are completely finished. Don't make excuses. Detach from other people's problems. Share your strategy with a safe person. Check in with them on a regular basis to monitor how you are doing. Failing to do this part would be an effective way to sabotage yourself. Develop a more accurate view of the world. Due to their early life experiences, nice guys tend to be ruled by deprivation thinking. They believe there is only so much to go around, and if someone else already has a lot, there is less for them. They think they have to control and manipulate or the little that they have will go away. Nice guys have a scarcity mindset in a world of abundance. When you begin to see the world as abundant, what it truly is, you are no longer afraid to lose what you have because you know that there is much more. If one man can make a million dollars, why can't you? If one man can start the business of his dreams, why can't you? If one man can drive a Mercedes, why can't you? If one man can quit a crummy job and find a better one, why can't you? If one man can be a snowboarding instructor, why can't you? Breaking free. Activity 45. Close your eyes for a moment. Take a couple of deep breaths and exhale slowly. Clear your mind. Once you are relaxed, picture yourself living in an abundant world. In this abundant world, there are no restraints or limitations. Good things flow past you continuously. Imagine every abundant thing you have ever desired. Car, home, friends, love, joy, wealth, success, peace of mind, challenge. Visualize yourself living your life surrounded by this abundance. Repeat this visualization several times a day until it begins to feel real to you. Open your arms, your heart, and your mind. Get out of the way and let it happen. Get the life you want. Nice guys believe that there is a set of rules that govern everything and that if they can get the key to these rules or hack them, then they will have a smooth and happy life. They also believe that failing to obey and respect these rules will yield terrible consequences. The truth is that there are no rules. The only rules that exist are the ones you establish. Breaking free. Activity 46. Read over the list of rules below. Try a few of them. Add to the list your own personal rules. Write these rules on note cards and put them where you can see them every day. 
If it frightens you, do it. Don't settle. Every time you settle, you get exactly what you settled for. Put yourself first. No matter what happens, you will handle it. Whatever you do, do it 100%. If you do what you have always done, you will get what you have always got. You are the only person on this planet responsible for your needs, wants, and happiness. Ask for what you want. If what you are doing isn't working, try something different. Be clear and direct. Learn to say and no. Don't make excuses. If you are an adult, you are old enough to make your own rules. Let people help you. Be honest with yourself. Do not let anyone treat you badly. No one. Ever. Remove yourself from a bad situation instead of waiting for the situation to change. Don't tolerate the intolerable, ever. Stop blaming. Victims never succeed. Live with integrity. Decide what feels right to you, then do it. Accept the consequences of your actions. Be good to yourself. Think of abundance. Face difficult situations and conflict head-on. Don't do anything in secret. Do it now. Be willing to let go of what you have so you can get what you want. Have fun. If you're not having fun, something is wrong. Give yourself room to fail. There are no mistakes, only learning experiences. Control is an illusion. Let go. Let life happen. By taking responsibility for creating the kind of life you really want, you can become all that you were meant to be. Well, there's another chapter conquered in the battle against niceness. If you didn't laugh, cry, or want to punch your inner people pleaser in the face, you weren't paying attention. But hey, that's the beauty of the no more Mr. Nice Guy. Uh, it's real, it's raw, and it works. So keep coming back for more dose of uncomfortable truths and liberating advice. And until then, remember, being nice is cool, but being truly you is unstoppable.